Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the new third generation Hyundai i20. This is the turbo variant. Straight away we are going to be opening the engine bay of this vehicle. It says turbo GDI right there. There is no insulation on offer which is surprising. Meanwhile it gets this gloss black finish grille. Turbo badging right there. The lights look nice. They are not all LED units because the indicators are halogens. So are the fog lights. These are projectors. They are strong enough. However, not complete LEDs. Okay, there's a projector set up here. This is the LED DRL and it says I-20 right there. Now, this is a functional air curtain over here and it gets this aggressive bumper as well. Paint finishing looks really nice. Lots of cuts and creases on this car. From the side, you realize that it again continues with the cuts and creases. In fact, it is bigger than before, bigger than the second generation I-20, of course. DCT badging right there. And uh, this is a gloss black finish on the outside rear view mirror. Okay, this is a dual tone treatment body of this car. You can opt for it as well. And there is a parking light rather, a puddle light which comes from here. Chrome door handles, request sensors right there. The size of the wheels, 195, 55, 16. But the car doesn't get a rear disc. Lot of chrome here. You also get a lot of piano black finishing. And the lights might remind you of a certain premium hatchback. Says i20 right there, really sharp Z shape. And there's chrome here as well, as ties the badging. Okay, you get rear parking sensors, but only two of them. They're not four, which are expected at this price point. So certain cost cutting has been done. This car also gets sort of a diffuser treatment, which absolutely does not help. There's a reverse parking camera of this vehicle. Chrome line kind of merging both the tail lights as such. Rear wiper, washer. Now, this is not a spoiler. High mounted stop lamp, shark fin antenna, which is the first in the segment as such. And I like the way this has been done. Yep, the fuel lid very nice okay let's open the boot of the car there you see the boot is um, bigger than before but not the biggest as such and the spare wheel is obviously smaller in terms of size because yes it happens to be a 14 inch sorry it's a 15 inch 185 65 15 is the size of this wheel that's the light this is the subwoofer it gets a seven speaker bose audio system wherein there are i think two tweeters four speakers one amplifier and one subwoofer as well, amplifier should be placed somewhere below that. And you get this red treatment on the turbo variant. Door pockets are actually large enough. You get a center armrest, but no center headrest and there are no cup holders inside. But the good thing is there's good amount of uh, knee room and leg room on offer. Yeah, so there's good amount of knee room, on, uh, knee room and leg room on offer. No scooped out seat bag, magazine holder, rear AC vents, storage space here for your phone. There's a USB charging socket, not the best under thigh support. Meanwhile, headroom is just about adequate, but you know what? They kind of scoop this out for improved headroom. So you see, it scoops out from here. There's a light placement here, handle, handle on both the sides. Okay, the glass area is fine as such with the red stitching, which is so subtle and nice. The dashboard actually looks quite nice and obviously sporty as well. So yes, certain things on this car look really very attractive. Especially, I love the way the infotainment system has been done. It's a 10.25 inch unit, which also does duty in other Hyundai Kia cars. So yeah, that's a good thing. Request sensor is here. There's no request sensor on the other side. The seats are comfortable. Beautiful red stitching on the seats. And of course, you get the red stitching here as well. Controls for the power windows, controls for the outside rear view mirrors, lock and unlock the car. Door pockets are large at the front as well. And you see the pedals are actually sort of finished in chrome. Sportiness, huh? Three buttons here, traction control. This is for the driver rear view monitor. And this is for the headlight adjustment, the leveler. Engine start stop button is placed very chupke as such. Okay, let's get inside. Front seats are really very comfortable and nice. Meanwhile, that continuous treatment is also happening, which will remind you of certain Maruti cars as well. No auto dimming inside your view mirror at this price point. Shocking. This car costs 13 and 13.35 lakhs actually. Sunglass holder, you get lights here, and obviously it gets a sunroof as well. And there the sunroof opens. Yeah, it's a decent sized sunroof. Push it once again to open it further. I love the cabin. The quality level is very good, but a lot of hard plastics. Okay, the glove box is decent size but it's a cool unit as well. That's again a nice touch. There's a charging pad, wireless charging pad, two USB slots and a cigarette lighter, 12 volt charging socket as such. There are two cup holders. One is taken by the Mercedes keys. One is taken by the air purifier, Oxy Boost air purifier. Storage space here as well. And you can push this ahead. Sliding armrest, AC controls are really very premium and nice. I love the AC controls on this car. Obviously climate control, air conditioning. These are the buttons to operate the audio system, phone call. Meanwhile, this is to browse through that Verna instrument cluster. You press this button and you can browse through this. You get a compass. You also get a tire pressure monitoring system. And yes, it looks nice. It's an all digital unit, 4.2 inch screen in the center automatic headlights and 
This is a very nice and fluid screen. It has got Hyundai's Blue Link app as well, connected car tech. You can see the maps are also beautiful on this car. Really very nice. And you know what? It has this split screen thing. So yeah, that's also very good. Like Hyundai is doing great job with its infotainment system. Apple CarPlay is there, Android Auto connectivity is there as well. And uh, everything is good other than the fact that there is no physical control. Obviously, there's a physical control here. Let's listen to an audio right away. Audio quality is actually quite nice. The reverse parking camera is also pretty good on this car. You get, uh, get guidelines which are obviously adaptive. Meanwhile, you also get a driver rear view monitor. You have to have the car in gear only to see it. This is the driver rear view monitor. Steering feels nice to hold. It's kind of on the bigger side, but it definitely feels nice to hold. Let's close this sunroof because we're going to do the wiper test. Like I was telling you, automatic headlights, automatic wipers as well. Decent amount of spray on offer. It also gets a rear wiper washer too. Mirrors feel fine. And what? There is no mirror here, but there is a toll receipt holder, which is not needed now because of fast tag. There's a mirror on the side car. Gets six airbags and plenty of safety tech. How is it to drive? Well, let's get driving. All right, we are all set to go. Air conditioning off, getting into drive mode, getting into sport mode, traction control off, driver rear view monitor on, left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, and the air purifier is off as well. Revving the motor, rev still barely 2000 RPM, even below that, and off we go. Upshifts at 6300 RPM in first, 6400 RPM in second, and in third gear, it goes all the way till, let me see the optimism, 6400 again. 0 to 100 kilometers per hour is a claimed 9.9 .9 seconds from this 1 liter turbo GDI motor. It's turbocharged, it gets direct injection as well, produces 120 horsepower and 172 Newton meters of torque. Engine is supremely refined, okay, and it gets a little sporty and vocal in the top end of the rev range. However, the problem is that it doesn't really give you the kick in the pants feel. There is lag lower down, which you have to contend with because obviously it's a small engine and uh, to get all that power, they have put up rather bigger turbo in comparison and that really affects the low end drivability of this car however unless and until you really want to get going fast there's no issue as such because the smoothness is there and this seven speed dual clutch transmission is also pretty good it has got two clutches you get a manual mode as well sport mode and manual mode are together it does not hold on to a gear in manual mode which is kind of unfortunate and upshifts on its own yep it does that and there are no paddle shifters on offer either but the performance is very slick it's quite a fast car and this is a 7 speed dct you can also get another transmission option which unfortunately is not a manual it's an imt but a manual is just better than an imt as far as driving fun goes this the, the imt does the job of an automatic to a certain extent because you go clutchless however personally for me i would say if you're getting the imt rather get the dct but if you're on a budget you have no option get the imt a manual would have been a real good choice it would have made it even half a second faster from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour because a manual is able to spin its wheels launch more aggressively the dct box actually does the launch because it doesn't rev more than i think 1800 rpm and that's the reason this car doesn't take off very fast in the low end plus the turbo lag to contend with mid-range is nice top end isn't really very strong but it sounds sporty it's very uh, silent an engine but it sounds sporty in the high end of the rev range as well fuel efficiency right now it says 8.3 kilometers per liter i think in the real world when you drive it sanely it should return somewhere between 11 to 14 kilometers per liter depending clearly on your driving style the car is underpinned by a new k platform which is 100 kg lighter than its predecessor and is also 13 percent stiffer it uses high strength steel to high tensile steel to give that added strength to the chassis for better safety as well as better handling as well in fact the suspension is also on the stiffer side on this car but the ride is good for the most part only thing is on sharper bumps you can feel it more so in the diesel because the diesel is more front end heavy so it's kind of uh, how do i put it it is uh, definitely stiffer the diesel this one is fine i would say and high speed stability is also fantastic braking performance is better than the diesel in the manuals is better somehow brake feel and bite could have been better on this car it feels a little i don't know it's not feeling that reassuring in terms of braking performance maybe i'm not getting that engine braking which i was expecting that said the steering is actually quite a surprise for a hyundai car it actually weighs up well it gives you feedback as well but you know what it's still not a fun to drive car as such yeah body roll is very well contained and it's a nice hatchback to drive but the ultros just feels better to drive feels more fun somehow and the steering is also better on the tata car the steering on this car is dramatically improved over its predecessor it's a very nice steering wheel but i definitely feel that there's still a lot of room for improvement but there's no hairiness there's no uh, how do i put it i've said that twice actually there is no nervousness in the car anymore the i20 tracks dead straight 
corners well, has ample amount of grip too. So yes, there is a dramatic improvement in almost every regard. Turning radius is small. This is being a Hyundai car, like in typical Hyundai fashion. Comfortable, easy to drive and easy to park as well. Meanwhile, the braking performance, we'll just apply that right now. You see, we have a safety aspect here for better brakes. There it comes out. How did you not get it out and my bag is fallen down? So you see, it does pick up pace quite well and gives you a quick move on as well. But you know what? It could have been a bit more vocal, more dramatic in that sense. That would be a real good thing about the i20 Turbo because this is a turbo variant, okay? They should have stiffened the chassis even further. The suspension too. The steering should have been heavier and it could have got dry modes as well because at the price of Rs 13.35 lakhs, this is an expensive car. Okay, the i20 range starts at 7.99 lakhs for the base petrol manual, the 1.2 litre engine, the Kappa motor. And you know what, there are 24 variants on offer, 24 variants of the i20, I know there are some of the variants also for dual tone. Now, this particular car is extremely expensive, 13.35 lakhs is a lot of money, you're better off with the Volkswagen Polo 1 litre TSI without the automatic, the manual, which costs like 3.5-4 lakhs cheaper, but you know what, it's definitely more fun, it doesn't have all the features, doesn't have as much space, isn't as practical and is very old as well, but still is the more fun to drive car. Definitely, without a doubt. In fact, the Polo feels so cheaper now because the i20 Turbo range starts at Rs 10.25 lakhs and all the prices I mentioned are obviously on-road Mumbai, which is more expensive than the top-of-the-line Polo. I'm talking about only the manual Polo, not the automatic. The automatic is slightly more expensive, but why would you pay 1.8 lakhs more for the automatic Polo when you can actually get the manual and have more fun with it? So as I see it, the Hyundai i20 Turbo, the Turbo variant at least, is a great fun package but very expensive for what it offers and for the price maybe Hyundai could have offered a lot more definitely when we compare it to the global i20 which gets a lot more features. That said, if you're looking for a hatchback which gives you everything like a great engine, great interior, lots of features, the i20 is still a very difficult car to fold, only be prepared to pay a premium for it. Which makes you wonder, should you get the venue instead? Obviously, people want high riding vehicles like an SUV, which the venue is a compact front wheel drive SUV. And if that is the kind of thing you want, then I don't know what is the target audience of the i20 Turbo. But yes, I am sure many of you would actually be buying the regular variants of the i20 because it is a big step up from its predecessor, a lot more confident, a lot more loaded and definitely better performing as well so guys this is my vlog of the hyundai i20 third generation model this is the turbo a vlog for the diesel will come soon as well so make sure to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon hit the like bye bye